Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is Nico and you're watching Dare to Game. Today we're playing Kingdom Come Deliverance and of course we're doing the Band of Bastards DLC. So just sit back and enjoy and let's go through it. Okay, so let's just jump right into it and see what's going on. Okay, so as usual we have our DLC screen. So it says, traveling the roads in the province is hazardous. Merchants are afraid even to stick their noses out of the inns. Visiting relatives in neighboring villages is a life or death gamble, and folk living in remote farmsteads sleep with axes under their pillows. Behind my oak, or behind any oak or ash along the wayside, there may be a ruthless bandit lying in wait, or even a poor student who has drunk away his last groschen and entered the spirit of these lawless times. Either way, the victim is lucky to lose only his purse and not his head. You can see Sir Radzig and begin dealing with the dangers lurking on the provincial roads. He can usually be found at Prickstein Castle in Retay. If you're not sure where to find him, look for the little star icon. This assignment may be temporarily unavail unavailable during the military operations towards the end of the main storyline, or may halt progress in the story for a while. So there you go, that's the information they give us, so let's just check it all out. Alright, so we've got our Band of Bastards armor on. Looks like I chose to use a Yu Longbow, St. George's Sword, some better piercing arrows. And, I don't know, this looks like a pretty... I didn't want to go with full plate armor. You know, that's basically the moral of the story here. So I got, uh, uh, Aachen Dark Brigandine, but, you know, good plate armor other than that. And I liked a uh, nice open face bassinet, so you can see my face during the story. So let's just get to it. Okay, so for me, it appears that Radzig is actually at Perkstein, so we're gonna go find him next. Okay, so on our way into the castle, I'm just going to cover a couple things. Uh, if you're wondering why this isn't uploaded on the first day or the day after that or the day after that, you know, that's actually several days after release, it's because I have terrible internet. I have to make these videos, and then I have to go and upload them uh, from somewhere with better internet. And uh, just to give you an idea of how terrible my internet is, this is a 5.2 gigabyte update that uh, unlocks this DLC after you've purchased it. It took me all day. I started it as early as I could in the morning, uh, well, not in the morning at 11 when they, you know, allowed me to start downloading it here. Uh, and it took literally all day for this to get done. Um, so yeah, that, that would be why this upload's a little late. But let's just, uh, you know, get going with the DLC. See how, how much fun this is. Hopefully it'll be nice and big, because 5 gigabytes, as far as I know, is the biggest one so far. There's our man. Let's see what he has to say. God be with you, Henry. Congratulations on winning the tournament. I'm proud of you. Sir, can I ask you about something? Of course, Henry. Well, I thought since we chased the bandits out of Privis Slavitz, the roads would be safer. Ah, criticizing your liege lord, are you? And what, in your opinion, should he do about it? Oh no, I don't mean anything by it. Just that it surprises me. <laughs> Easy, lad. I'm only pulling your leg. You're quite right. The roads really aren't safe. Mostly due to one thing. My garrison is a shamble these days. I lost most of my men in Skalitz, and what I'm left with after Pribislavitz is hardly enough even to guard Pirkstein. Let alone guarding the roads and patrolling the rest of the province. I simply don't have the men. Uh-huh. I understand. That is, I didn't have the men. As it happens, you've come at just the right time. Recently, I asked an old acquaintance for help. Sir Kuno of Rickwald and his mercenary band. The men who ride with him are a rough lot, mostly former convicts, but they're as capable as any squad of soldiers. Well, excuse me for being so bold, but there's plenty of mercenaries around. Surely you can find a more... respectable band? You have a point, lad, but I'd like to tell you I talked to Kuno because I trust him. But actually, my reasons are of a more pragmatic nature. You see, Kuno owes me a favor, so he'll serve me free of charge. So, you want me to join them? Yes, but that's not all. I told Kuno I'd send him a guide. But really what I need is for someone to keep a close eye on him and his men. Someone reliable. And I'd say you fit the part. Go and report to him at his encampment. You'll ride with his band on patrols and make sure they don't get too... disorderly. Who is this Sir Kuno of Rickwald? 
He's the last baron of the house of Rickwalt, which became impoverished. So he took to the mercenary trade, like many poor noblemen do, unless they become robbers, which often isn't all that different. He's certainly an entertaining companion, but as a mercenary, well, let's just say he has his own particular approach to certain matters. That well, sounds a little worrying. No, oh, it's nothing too bad. Just that now and again he needs reminding not to step over the line. How is he indebted to you? I did him quite a big service, actually. I saved him from the hangman. Oh, that sounds like quite a story. How did it happen? You should ask him. You'll be spending quite a while riding together, so it'll help pass the time. But one thing I can tell you, he seems to have taken inspiration from me. A lot of his men had their own encounters with the executioner, too. All right. I'll go and report to him. Excellent. He set up camp between Ratai and Ledechko. It's a good base for covering the province. Good luck, Henry. And watch out for yourself. I will, sir. Thanks. All right, so that seems straightforward enough. So, uh... Yeah, you know what was really annoying during that? Uh, all of those weird... the flashing that was going on. Uh, of course, with a big update like this, it's expected that we're going to see some bugs, so hopefully none too game-breaking, but I guess we'll see what has to come. But anyway, let's just, you know, go find this Sir Kuno and see what's up. Alright, so it appears we found his camp. It actually wasn't very far from Rete. I can show you where it is on the map. It's right here, apparently, and Rete's right there, so it didn't take very long to get here. Let's go check him out. Hopefully this will be entertaining. I'm sure it will be. I'll be with you. Uh, I'm looking for Sukuno. Sukuno? Uh, Baron Rickvold. Isn't this his camp? You won't get nothing out of him. He must be Radzig's man. I heard he was supposed to send someone. Yes, Sir Radzig sent me as a guide. I'm Henry. I'm Jakey. And this here fella, we call the Stone. Yeah, I can see why. What's up with him? Cat got his tongue? No. More like the dog got it. The executioner's dog. <laughs> and the executioner ripped it out of him. Anyway, you better come along with me. I'll introduce you to the other fellas. And the chief. These here are the Bearman brothers, Petter and Jan. They're a barrel of laughs, except when they're too drunk to string two words together. Like now. Don't get on the wrong side of them, though. When their blood is up, well, it ain't a pretty sight. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Never mind the fancy poses, Stefan. You're trying to kill the fucker, not teach him how to dance. And you, Dangler, stand your ground. Don't let him lead you round by the nose. Sir? Well, sir, this is Henry. From Co... From Lord Kobler. Ah, it's about time Rads had got round to this. We need someone who knows their way round these parts. Move off with the uh, bowing and curtsy. We don't hold with that tomfoolery here. Jakey! Where the hell are you sneaking off to? Go to the farm and get water. The lads are thirsty. But I went last time. And you'll go next time, you ungrateful pup. Get your ass moving. Snot nose brat. You pull them out of a pile of shit. And they thank you with back talk. Where were we? Oh, yeah. We need a guide who knows these parts. So I hope I can rely on you, Herman. That's Henry. Right. Well, as I said to Radzig, I don't want to carry any dead weight. We could find ourselves in some very tight situations where every sword counts. I know how to handle a sword, all right? I've heard a lot of fellas say that. They still ended up on the wrong end of one. <laughs> we'll find out. Stefan, take a break. Dangler! Let's find out what Harold here can do. Sure. No problem, Chief. 
All right, let's see if this is much of a challenge. Ooh, not too bad. I like his name, Dangler. I think they might be trying to say he may be as well endowed. Hmm. You didn't fare badly at all, I must say. You can ride with us. All right. Good. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> Sir Kuno, can you tell me something about yourself? Drop the sir. That title brought me nothing but grief. But what do you want to know? Sir Radzig told me the Rickvold family um, lost its wealth. How did that happen? There's all sorts of ways to become impoverished. Nothing easier. Especially when your father's a fool. And your mother's mad as a bat. Oh. But it's a long and twisted story. We took our name from Rickvald Castle. But that actually belonged to the convent of the poor Clares in Tynitz. And my father only leased it. You see, he knew the abbess there since they were young. Knew her very well. There was even talk that she only joined the order because her family wouldn't let her marry him. Anyway, whether he was fucking her right there in the convent or he just took a lot of interest in scripture, he spent an awful lot of time in Tynitz. Well, he might have been after a bit of both. Sinning and confessing all in one place. Well, I can see the convenience of it. Anyway, my mother never had strong nerves. Truth be told, her sanity was always shaky. Pa's escapades drove her cuckoo entirely. Then, one frosty December morning, I was woken by screaming and smoke. I looked out the window, and I saw my mother there, in the courtyard, wreathed in flames. Behind her, the stables, the farm buildings, and the tower were burning too. And she just stood there, shrieking with laughter. Christ! Sounds like a scene straight out of hell. Hellish it was, I can tell you. Me and my sister Adela and a few servants managed to get out before the whole place went up. I couldn't get to my father. Or my little brother. Poor lad was only seven. My sister and I were left destitute after the fire. But then my cousin, Adam of Drevich, took us into his castle. A few weeks later, he offered to buy what was left of our estates and sell me a small fortress near a Kovnik. It was a great relief. We suddenly had some hope of a future again. So I told my sister about it. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. A week later, the two of them announced to me they were getting married. And all that was left of our estates, lands, woods, villages, Adela was to get it all as a dowry. But surely that was for you to decide. You were the head of the family, right? Aye. Only I barely had 17 years under my belt, and I'd just lost everything. Of course, I argued with them, and that was the only excuse they needed to kick me out of Drevich too. <sighs> That's pretty harsh. You're telling me. But I'm not complaining. As my pa always used to say, if you could turn your hand to something, you'd never be lost. I doubt it ever crossed his mind how often I'd remember those words. What about your debt to Sir Radzik? How did that come about? A twist of fate, lad. I was fighting in the hostilities between the house of Schallenberg and the town of Colleen. Some trade dispute it was. And I fought under the Schallenberg colours. In the end, the two sides negotiated a truce. And I rode to Colleen with a delegation that was to parlay there. We stopped off at an inn on the way. And it was there that I met Radzik Kobila. I could tell at first sight he was a man after my own heart. A likeable rogue with a sharp mind and a merry soul. We spent the whole night drinking together and talking. And in the morning, we set off together with sore heads, but in good temper, since he was travelling the Colleen same as I was. Only, once we reached the city gates, they arrested me on the spot. <laughs> Seems the burghers had it in for me, since I'd been making their lives hell for a good six months. On the other hand, I was a member of the peace delegation, so by rights, they shouldn't have even looked at me sideways. 
And then it hit me why Radzig was there. Kolin is a royal city. So he was there to represent the king's interests. I see. So he was on the other side. That's right. Anyway, they threw me in a dungeon. And a few days later, word reached me that the Schallenbergs had reached an agreement with the Burgers. Only part of the deal was they would give them my head. And I'd surely have ended my day swinging from the town battlements if it hadn't been for Radzig. He liked me, and he could see it was a dirty trick. So he somehow squared things with the city council. Lucky for you. Indeed. I owe my life to Radzig, and I'll never forget it. He's asked me twice before for help. This is the third time. And how could I refuse him? I'd like to ask about your men. Ask away. What about the fellow they call Dangler? I've never ridden with a better man, I can tell you. He doesn't say a lot, but for that, he listens all the better. Nothing escapes him. So he scouts for you? Not just that. It's happened more than once. I was closing a deal with someone, and Dangler told me after that he didn't like the smell of the fella. Nearly every time he was right, and the fellow tried to stab me in the back afterwards. Those Behrman brothers are quite a pair. Indeed they are. There's no more mercy in them than in, well, a bear. If I told them to skewer you on the spot, they'd do it without batting an eyelid. Jesus. Oh, I. They'd argue first about which one of them got to do the job. But they're as obedient as a huntsman's dogs. Real soldiers, the pair of them. Reliable. As long as they don't get too drunk. Then there's no keeping them under control. But nobody's perfect. What can you tell me about Stefan? Fletching. For one thing, he's a very resourceful fellow. How did he come to join your band? Well, let's just say he was in the right place at the right time. You'll find he has quite a knack for that. What exactly happened? Sorry, I'd love to tell you the whole story, but I'd be betraying his trust. Oh, now you've got me curious. Maybe I should ask him myself. Sure, why not? Our Fletch does love to converse. What about that dumb one? How did he end up with you? The stone? Oh, he just kind of tagged along. Just like that? Aye, just like that. We were riding from Olomots to a castle past Kladsko, when we ran into him and some other wayfarers camping along the way. You know how it goes. We made acquaintance with them, had a drink or two. Then we travelled on together. After all, there's safety in numbers. I'm not sure I'd be thinking that if I ran into you lot on the road. We might have done some things I ain't proud of, but wayfarers are sacred even for me. Anyway, our fellow travellers dropped off along the way. One in Mohelnitz, one in Schoenberg, and the rest in Kladsko. Except for the stone. He stuck with us the whole way. The fellas kept asking him what he was after. But of course, he never said a word. When we were approaching Barsdorf, I ordered the men to get rid of him. I had some business at the castle, and I didn't want any strangers sticking their noses in. Stefan tried to tell him nicely. But he just sat there, staring like he was turned to stone. That's when we gave him the name. Then the Bearman brothers tried to get him off his horse. He booted Jan in the face and knocked him out cold. Then he jumped down and fell Petter with one punch. Oh, a man who can do that is a man you want on your side. So we kept him. Weren't you worried about having a stranger in your band? Especially one who didn't talk. No, I figured if he can't talk, he can't tell. Besides, I've had worse. What about Jakey? Jakey, that boy will be the death of me. You've got to be tough on him, or he's good for nothing. But I'm fond of him, in a way. Like her son? I wouldn't go that far. But I've no family of my own. And unlike those other cutthroats, he seems to me like... like a good lad. Well, you're pretty hard on him, though. And the others keep him on his toes, too. The boy needs a firm hand. I was like him once, and I got the same too. If we let him be, we'd end up with a third bear man. And who'd want that? <laughs> True. 
two is more than enough. Alright, so that's where I think we should end it for today. I know there's a lot of exposition and everything, but I like to, when I play these, when I do a playthrough, I like to learn as much as I can right away, and then take it on in the action. So that's the end of episode one. So join us next time for episode two. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. If you did, I can assume you like the content, and hopefully you'll subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you haven't already, check out these links I have on the screen to see me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you like my content and would like to support what I do here, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description, and a donation would be much appreciated. In any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.